Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for participating in today's training. Today is March 28, 2018. My name is Sandra Reyes, and I will be your presenter on today's training. Uh, today, it's part two of a three training series. Yesterday, we discussed the difference between direct messaging and secure messaging, where direct messaging is communication, safe and secure communication provider to provider, and secure message is safe and secure communication provider to patient. Today, we're going to go a little bit deeper into direct messaging and its functionality for Intergy. Um, also, as a reminder, this is all with regards to the Greenway patient portal. This does, I do not go over the practice portal. This is only for the Greenway patient portal information. Some housekeeping items. When I open the lines for um, questions, please keep your line muted. Do not put us on hold because it will disrupt the training. And don't forget to um, rate the training at the end. We're going to go over direct secure messaging today. I'm going to give you some overview of the direct messaging setup. I do not go deep into setup. That is a training that is done when the practice goes live. And, and right now the only thing I want to give you is some pointers of what you should be looking for when you go and you check your, um, your direct messaging setup. How to send a direct message, a direct message. How to use a CCD. This is actually a new functionality. You can actually use a continuity of care document that you receive via direct message to update a patient registration information. How to send a direct message using referral summary. Saving that continuity of care when you, re you know, receive it to the patient chart and importing that information into the patient chart. As I mentioned yesterday, direct messaging was initiated by the ONC in 2010. It was in an effort to create and develop an easy, simple, secure way with the specific standards for providers to communicate and to share patient information. In order to participate, direct trusted agents need to go through an accreditation process and they are then responsible for ensuring that they're meeting all standards for the documentation, for the transmission, and also that the providers go are certified. Again, direct message is an encrypted HIPAA compliant method for electronically sharing protected information, patient information provided to provider. In our case, we use um, Intergy as our certified VHR provider, and we use SureScript as our health information service provider to comply with these requirements. Something, um, there's some key points that I want you to keep in mind when we're discussing direct messaging. Um, uh, one of them is all providers must have a direct address. In order to get a direct address, you need to apply. And the information, they get um, identity uh, proofing. They go, the providers go through identity proofing, and they link that information to their MPI number. Once that information is, uh, when they, once their identity is uh, ident uh, proof, sorry for the, um, they get a certificate and the certificate that confirms their, their identity, and that's how they obtain a direct address in order to participate in the direct project. That's why it's important for the centers to keep people in charge of maintaining those licenses and those certificates. Usually centers purchase a number of licenses, but they, when they turn over or a provider leaves the company, they forget to contact us and either replace or remove that certificate. That is important because that's how ChoreScript keeps the directory up to date and this information and also you're paying for a certificate that you're not using or that could be used by another provider. 
As a rule of thumb, um, direct addresses look very similar to an email address, to a regular email, email address. So as a rule of thumb, there's usually have direct somewhere in the line, in the name. So for all of the centers that are participating with the new Greenway Patient Portal, they, for the most part, they have direct by Greenway at the end of the email address, the direct address. Okay? So if you want to know if you're utilizing a direct email address, it's usually good to look for that word somewhere in that email. Exactly how does it work? So in our cases, our providers, after they're certified and their identity is proved, um, they get a certification and they get an email, direct email. Then since they're utilizing Intergy EHR, that generates the CCD complying with the direct project requirements. When that document is generated, it is then sent to the health information service provider, which in our case is ChurScript. ChurScript encrypts that information and also authenticates the recipient. Once that's done on their side, that information is sent to the provider, to the recipient. That provider must also be using a health information service provider that has gone through the same accreditation process. They also check, they authentic, uh, authenticate the identity of the recipient and the sender. They unencrypt the information so that the recipient is able to read it. And that's how the information is then displayed for the providers. So this is a simple way to remember that direct message is provided to provider. It, it goes outside of your servers. When it goes to setup, as I mentioned, I'm not going to go deep into the setup. This is something that every uh, practice goes through when they implement the new Greenberg patient. Right now, I just want you to know a few pointers so that you can go back to your system and see if you're set up properly. One of the main things is that every provider needs to have a direct email assigned. And how do you check that? You go into Intergy, Setup, Individuals, Provider Maintenance, and you look. In the Provider Maintenance, you're going to click on Preferences, and you're going to look for direct message address. There should be a direct message right next to their name. The second part that you're going to check is, again, in the same window, under Preferences, you're going to check for a direct message inbound recipient. This is the person that is receiving the task. So when another provider is sending you direct messages for, for your patients, so an outside provider sends you a referral summary, you need to receive that, and you will be receiving that through Intergy Task module. You need to have a recipient ready to accept those tasks, this will be the recipient. It could be an individual. Many of our practices use a dummy user. Sometimes they call it referral pool. Sometimes they call it clinical pool. However you call it, it is a dummy user that is created so that more than one person can monitor those tasks. So if you're using a pool to receive referral summaries, for example, then in here you want to put that user. If you have only one person assigned to work those tasks, then that will be the name of the user that you use here in this line. But you must have somebody assigned to receive those tasks. Another thing, so the next thing that you need to check is to verify that you're monitoring those tasks. So somebody is able to monitor the information that there is um, being received by the direct message inbound recipient. So for example, if you're using a pool, a referral pool, and I'm part of that pool, I want to make sure that I can monitor that pool. And the second piece that is very important is if you're going to be working direct messages on behalf of the provider, remember that direct messages is provided to provider, but the providers are not always the ones that are working these direct messages. 
There is um, support staff that generates the referral summaries. There is support staff that will be documenting this information. So for that staff, whoever it is, to be able to work those tasks, they need to be set up to monitor that provider. So there are two steps to this. Make sure that someone is monitoring the pool, the recipient, and make sure that if you're going to work direct messages on behalf of that provider, that you set up to monitor that provider directly. And this is how you will see it on your system. Again, in Intergy, you will go to the Setup menu, you will click on Task, and you click on it for the Task Setup window to display. On the left-hand side, you click on Monitoring, and you make sure that the monitoring is set up. If you do not know how to set up monitoring, routing tasks, and everything regarding to Task Setup, please contact our um, Health Information Service or your um, a strategic partner to uh, schedule a training. That's something that we can provide for you. The next piece that is very important is one of the biggest challenges that a lot of the practices um, and a lot of people that wanted to participate and that needed to participate for meaningful use with direct project was that not a lot of providers had a direct message, a direct email. So now that more and more providers are starting to participate, we have a way in the system that you can start collecting and saving those direct message, uh, direct emails. How do you do that? For your referring providers, and I will encourage you to start the, those referring providers that you worked with most often, you go into setup individuals and providers, and go and select the referring providers. That will access the referring provider maintenance window, and you look for that referring provider that you are working with. You click on the left-hand side under Preferences, and in the list you look for Direct Message Address. So if you know that Dr. Smith is a provider that you work with frequently and that you're sending several referral summaries to that provider, you should make it a point to reach out to them, get their direct address, come here to the Referring Provider Maintenance window, and update that information. This is going to be available to the staff and it's going to be, make it so much easier for sending direct messages. Again, don't forget to update your referring provider maintenance. Now we're going to go into the functionalities of sending, actually sending a direct message. I am outlining here the steps, and this is just in a way if you just wanted to print out this page, you could use it. But I'm going to go into detail into each one of these steps. So for the most part, direct messages are being sent using Intergy EHR. But you must remember that a direct message can be sent from anywhere in the system. You can also go into Intergy if you just wanted to send a communication to any one of your providers. Maybe you just want to let them know that you receive a referral system. Just remember, this is a secure electronic communication, and that whatever you send via direct message will be saved into your system. So you can use direct messaging for any type of communication. So if you're starting from Intergy, you click on Task, you click New to get the uh, direct message window. If you're starting from Intergy EHR, you go into the task module and you just click the plus sign. Now, the next thing that you're going to have is the new window pops up. And as you can see, it looks very much like a task when you're working a task, creating a task, receiving a task. 
what I want to point out is this here you would only have available to you if you're set up to monitor that provider. This is a question that we get often, how come I, don't, how come I cannot see this option in my window? Well, it's because most likely, 80% of the time, you're not so set up to monitor that provider. In this case, I'm set up to monitor that provider, and this is the window that I will see. So the first thing that you do is, is click on Provider, and it's very clear. Luckily now, Intergy has been updated, and it's a lot more easier to determine if you're sending a secure message or a direct message. So you're going to click on Provider because we are working only on direct message, meaning provider to provider. You want to make sure that in the to-do line you don't include any PHI, any patient information. And you're going to click on the to line. When you click on the to field, this window pops up for you to select the recipients. There is a lot of different options that you have in this window. If you're sending a patient-related direct message and that patient has someone in their care team that has a direct address, you will see them here and then you can select them as one of your recipients. If you're make, keeping a list of your favorites, those referral or those providers that you're working with more often, you will see them here under your favorites. And the third option is if you click on their contacts, you have actually three more options in here. If you're keeping up your list of referring providers, you can click on this box, referring providers, and you will be able to select the recipient directly from this window. If you do not have the referring provider, but you can uh, you know that that person participates in short scripts, or you could always search short scripts. Short scripts right now is one of the biggest um, trusted agents, but it's not the only one. So you will be able to find about 80 to 90 percent. I cannot say on a correct percentage, but a large amount of providers are participating in the short scripts directory. So it is a national database, and you'll be able to find providers all over the, the nation. If you're unable to find the provider in short scripts, then the third option is for you to select other recipient. Most likely contact that recipient, get their direct address, and you can add it manually. When you click Other, to add it manually. This is the window that you will get. You will enter the information, the specialty, and the direct address. And when you're ready, you click Add. That person will be displayed in the To line. And if you want to keep that person into your favorites, you just click the star right next to their name, and they will be added here under your favorites. Okay, that's all you're going to need to do. Just click the start right next to their name, and they will be added under your favorites. If you no longer want to keep them in your favorites, to remove them from there, you just click this X right next to their name. In this case, we're also going to use chore scripts. And again, you just need to put as much information as you have on that provider that you're sending their information to. Um, you can limit your search by city, by state. And once you're able to find the provider that you're sending, uh, that you want as a recipient, you highlight it and you click Select. So those are all the options that you have to add a recipient in the two line. And you can also send it to multiple recipients.
then you're back into the message. Now, if this is a patient-related message, you will click this box right here, and that will prompt you to look for the patient's name. You will look for the patient in your patient information. You will click OK. And now the patient is added to the message. The next step is to add an attachment. And there's um, some options that you have in adding an attachment. One of them, you're going to display most of the documentation, but how do you do that? Using this light bar on the top, you can display as many documents as you have available for that patient, or you can limit your findings to the most recent, by day, by week, by month. Something that you need to keep in mind when you're adding attachments is that you cannot have more than five attachments. Once you start adding more than five, you're going to get this warning. Once you're done adding your attachments, which is anything that is under documents or exchange documents for that patient, Actually, not only that, you can also select a specific file, PDF file, by clicking this button here. You go on into your computer, you select the attachment that you're going to send with this direct message, and once you're done, you click Attach. Now that you're done attaching information to the message, this is what it will look like. Finally, if you want to keep this message displaying in the document section for that patient, you can click Save Message to Patients Chart. Something that you need to keep in mind is that a lot of this information is being saved as a task under the task section. So not all, you don't have to save it to, to the chart. It will be saved under tasking. Um, I do it when I want to make sure that I keep all the attachments and everything that went uh, through with the message. When you're done with the subject line, again, something to keep in mind is the subject line is not encrypted, so you have to be very careful as to not send any PHI, any patient-related information on that subject line. The body of the message is encrypted, so you can type uh, any information you want on the body of the message. Um, a very useful tool if you find yourself typing the same thing over and over again is to use the quick test functionality here that you can set up. And once you're done completing the body of your message, you click Send. So that's basically how you would be sending a direct message. Now I'm going to show you something that is very, very new, a very new functionality in this system, which is when you're receiving a uh, continuity of care document, you can now use it to populate patient registration. How do you do that? This is something that you can only and only do from the Intergy desktop. You're not going to be able to do this from Intergy EHR. So if you're working your task from Intergy Desktop, you go to Task and you go to Word Task. You're going to see the message, and I'm going to take you through the steps. So we're going to go into Intergy, Task, Word Task, and you're going to have the direct messages that you're receiving here as a task type. This is what it would look like. Direct message testing. This is the message that you're receiving. And here on the top, you're going to see the referral summary that was sent to you. You're going to click on the XML attachment. So make sure that you're clicking on the XML attachment for this to work. Once the attachment opens,
the document opens with it, and you're going to find this option here that says register patient. What I want you to remember is that you will not see this option if you open this task from Intergy EHR. You will only see this option if you open it from Intergy desktop. Okay? So you're working the task from Intergy. You click Register Patient, and the Registration New Account pops up. I will really only use this functionality as of right now for new patients. Um, this is something that we're testing, and as I'm telling you, it's a new functionality. And you might run into, uh, you might start creating some duplication if you're not making sure that all this information is from an actual new patient. Okay? But this is something very neat. So if you have a new patient and that you receive a referral from, this is a way that you can just update the registration information directly from a continuity of care document. Once you're done inputting all the information, you click register. So those are two functionalities of how exactly to work with direct messaging. Now we're going to go a little bit into what this has to do with meaningful use. As we know, for Meaningful Use Stage 2, Objective 5 has to do with health information exchange. And this measure, what it's asking you is for 10% of all the transitions of care that the provider does during the reporting period to send them via, to send them electronically. And the way that we're sending this information electronically is by utilizing direct messaging. Something to keep in mind, or well, actually something, let me go back to here. In order, what initiates this process is when a provider enters the order in Intergy EHR from orders and charges. I will not go into that, those, that part of the steps. Um, I invite you to go into our Meaningful Use Library in the HCN portal to get more information on this, or we could definitely um, schedule a training for orders and charges and orders set up if you're not familiar with the referrals workflow. In this training, we're going over the functionalities for direct messaging, so I'm going to jump into how to generate the exchange document. But something that I do want to you to keep in mind, again, is that the continuity of care is generated starting with a patient order in Entergy EHR. That the provider listed in that encounter is the one that will be receiving the credit. And the encounter that is, using, that is used needs to be the one where the referral order was entered by the provider. So how do we generate the exchange document? We're going to go from Intergy EHR. So to generate these documents, you always have to go into Intergy EHR. You select the patient that you're going to be referring to an outside provider. And right here on the information page, you click on Generate Exchange Document. We all know that there's a lot of different ways to work in Intergy. This is one of the ways that I'm showing you. You could do the same thing if you click on the side and you look for exchange documents. In this case, we're just going to click generate exchange document. And it takes us to the same window that you will get if you go through the exchange document. The first thing that we're going to select is the referring provider. So we click the referring provider. And my screen just went blank. And remember the recipient information that we went over um, in the previous um, slides? You will follow the same steps to select the recipient. 
The second part that you're going to do is you're going to select the referral summary here from this list when under the What section. And here you can select the encounter that is linked to the referral order, but I'm also going to show you that it pops up again if you click, if you follow the steps. So I'll go back to this. In this subject line, make sure that you type the reason for the referral. The next part is the Include section. In the Include section, we want to make sure that everything that is needed and required for Meaningful Use Stage 2, it's included. Here we're giving you a list of what must be included for you to meet the measure. If you need to change any of these options, the only thing that you need to do is click the hyperlink that says Change, and it will give you the list, and you can check in or out any section that you want to add or remove. When you're done selecting your referring provider, the referral summary, and the topic, you click Send. By clicking Send, it triggers also the Select Encounter window to pop up. When, those when that window pops up, again, what you need to keep in mind is that you're selecting the encounter that is linked to the referral order, and that the provider that is in that encounter is the one that will be receiving the credit for meaningful use. Once you make sure that you're selecting the correct encounter, you're going to click OK. and you're going to get the direct message window. As you can see, automatically the referral summary is attached. The patient is selected. The provider is selected. You're going to continue, and you're going to finish the subject line, the body of the message. Again, keeping in mind not to put any PHI on the subject line, and using quick text if needed. Uh, something that I want to point out is, can you see here from Sandra Reyes on behalf of this provider? So it would always say that it's on behalf of the provider that has the certificate and that you're selecting and working for. So once you're done, you click Send, and you have successfully submitted a referral summary electronically to another provider. I added this piece because while in Meaningful Use Stage 2, what they are asking providers to do is for transmission only, I want to make sure that you know that right now they're asking you in a Stage 2, they're only asking you for sending 10% of those transitions electronically. In Meaningful Use Stage 3, the number is going to go up to 50%. Now, the second thing that I want to point out from this screen is that in Meaningful Use Stage 3, they're also asking you to start receiving information from other providers. So it's not just sending out to other providers a uh, transition of care. Now that you're going to start receiving that information into your systems, you're going to have to start incorporating it in your regular workflows. So now we're going to go over how to actually incorporate that into your workflows. The first part of the measure is that for Meaningful Use Stage 3 is that you need to save the CCD to the patient's chart. How do you do that? You're going to start from Intergy EHR. You're going to go into your task. 
and you're going to again receive tasks that are labeled direct messages. Once you receive those type of tasks from outside providers, it's going to come with an attachment. That is XML attachment. You're going to open that XML attachment. That's what this link is for. So you go through the referral summary. Always make sure that you're selecting the one that has XML at the end of the name. You click on that, and it opens the exchange document. This is the exchange document that opens up once you click on the link. And right then and there, you're going to have a button that says Save to Chart. So that is part of the measure where you're saving the exchange document into the patient's chart. It will prompt you to select the correct patient. Be very, very caref careful. Usually the easiest way is that you can move this window to the side, and you can quickly compare name to name date of birth to date of birth, phone to phone, to make sure that you are actually adding that information into the correct patient chart. And you click OK once you select that patient. Once you finish that step, when you go into the patient information and you click Documents, you're going to see it right there, and the attachments will also be included. This is how you save a continuity of care document that you receive from an outside provider into the patient's chart. The second part of the uh, meaningful use um, part is stage three is that you actually need to import that information and do some reconciliation. How do you do that? We already receive the document from an outside provider, and you're going to go now into the patient's account. You're going to click the Exchange module, and in there it's going to display all the documents that you have either received, and those are going to be displayed in green. So this one you have received and retrieved from outside providers, or you have generated yourself. Those are displayed in blue. So that's what the color labels mean. The blue ones are documents, exchange documents that you have generated for your practice. The green ones are documents that have been received and retrieved by your practice. Once you select the document that you want to work with and import, you highlight it. Again, we're in the exchange, in the patient chart, in the exchange documents. You highlight the document. It displays the details on the right-hand side. So we are highlighting and selecting the document. And you're going to have here on the top of the window, you're going to have the option that says Import Discrete Data. Once you click that, again, remember that this is all with regards and linked to Meaningful Use. So this is going to be the way that the provider gets credited. So it has to be linked to an encounter. You select the correct encounter, and you click OK. Once you click OK, the import document displays, and this is what it looks like. 
And just as a highlight, stage streaming for use, objective three, measure three. Um, perform a clinical information reconciliation for the following. And I just noticed that I have a mistake. The objective is, is not object, objective three, it's objective five. And I will send you the correction. Give me one second. So the name of the objective, I'm mean, not the name. The number for the objective is um, different, but the measure is for an eligible provider that performs a clinical information reconciliation for the following three. So when you're importing a CCD document, you want to make sure that you're doing medication reconciliation, problem list reconciliation, and allergies, medication or allergies um, reconciliation. How do you do that? You go through the list, and the ones that are included in the CCD that you received are going to be here, highlighted in blue. And the ones that are in the chart will also show a green arrow here. If one of them is not in the chart, in the patient's chart, the only thing that you need to do is click on it, and that information will now be incorporated into the patient's information. So in this case, this problem was not in the patient's chart. We selected it, and now it will be added to the patient. Same thing with this, medic this allergy to aspirin. It was not in the patient's chart, so now we highlight it, we click on the circle, and it's ready for import. You go through, again, medications, problem list, and allergy list. You incorporate the information that you need to incorporate by checking the circle. And finally, you click import. Now that information is in the patient chart, and it will be clearly indicated that it was imported from another document, from an external document. Another piece that I want to add to the to this is. When you're importing and when you're sending a, a direct message, now you're going to have an option that says Request for Exchange Document from Referring Provider. And I'm sure you've seen it, but you're not sure what that means. This is what it means. This is mainly having to do with Stage 3 Meaningful Use. When you request for an exchange document from a referring provider, you expect to receive something, but if you do not receive that document back, by clicking this box when you're sending the request, it will keep the patient out of the denominator if you do not receive that document back. This is for stage three meaningful use, measure two, that has to do with receiving and downloading exchange documents. So. This, if you want to, if you're not sure if you're going to receive a documentation back, or referring um, summary or a continuity of care document, then you click this option when you're sending the request out. Another thing that I want to uh, let you know about the functionality for direct messaging is that not only you can generate exchange documents, but you can actually go into the documents section, highlight any document that you want, right click, and you will have the send via direct messaging to provider option. Again, that is if you're set up to monitor that provider. Something again that I like very much that they did in this, um, that they updated is that now it is very clearly stated, send via direct messaging to a provider or send via secure messaging to a patient. So in this case, we're sending via direct messaging to a provider. And you will follow the same steps that I showed you at the beginning, 
on how to send a direct message, selecting the recipient, typing your subject line. You can add more attachments if you need to, and finally click the Sending button. That will be saved into your documentation as well. You could do the same exact thing for imaging, for labs, and again for exchange documents. So just go into that module, right click, and you will see this option. Okay, so I've gone through the functionalities of direct messaging for Greenway Patient Portal. I see a lot of questions on the line, so I'm going to open the lines for questions at this time. Um, one of the challenges that we have, unfortunately, is that I cannot go into an actual centers um, to show you different functionalities. That's why we have all these screenshots. Um, so if you have a question, just keep in mind that I cannot show it to you in an actual um, environment. Okay, with that said, I'm going to open the lines for questions. One second. 